Hot cross buns are delightfully spiced, sweet buns that are leavened with yeast and studded with dried or fresh fruit and candied citrus peel. The tops are adorned with white crosses made of icing or flour or a combination of both. Traditionally, pastry dough was used for the crosses or it was cut onto the dough with a knife. Did you know that the tradition of hot cross buns on Good Friday was started by a 12th century monk? When I think of hot cross buns, I think of kites, bobolis, setting an egg in a glass and enjoying mom's provision pie with stewed fish. Fish broth was always on the menu too. Just thinking about it makes me smile and dribble at the same time. Okay, enough about my memories. Let me make some buns with crosses on top. Here are the ingredients you'll need to make the dough. Four cups of bread flour, two eggs, four tablespoons of butter, half cup of sugar, and you can use brown or white. This ingredient is optional, but it makes the bread so yummy and soft. It's called malted milk. Here I have some raisins and some orange juice that I'll use to soak it. You all know that raisins are my least favorite dried fruit, but I wanted to make it close to the traditional way. Here I have some candied mixed fruit that I got from the amazing Lassia in New York. I also have this citron that I got at my local grocery store. I actually ground some allspice or pimento berries in my spice grinder for some jake chicken, and I left a little bit in there to grind with some whole cloves. Spice up your buns with your favorite flavors. I'm using two teaspoons of cinnamon, two teaspoons of nutmeg, the clove and the allspice mixture, and I'm also using a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. There should have been a tablespoon of yeast here, but I totally forgot to put it. I also have some vanilla extract and a little more than about half cup of warm milk. Before I start, I'll add some hot orange juice to the raisins. Feel free to add any type of alcoholic beverage you want, you'll get a nice boost of flavor when you bite into one of those raisins. This step is optional, but I'm using an Asian bread making technique called the Tangzhong method. It makes the softest bread ever. To a pan, add a half cup of milk and three tablespoons of flour. Whisk to remove the lumps and cook until it looks like a paste. This actually looks like a Hindu dessert called Lapsi. Once it looks like this, turn the heat off and let the tangzhong cool down. Once it has cooled down, add all the ingredients to the flour, including the yeast. I'm also adding some orange zest in there too. Melt the butter before adding it and make sure the milk is warm.
I use just over a half cup of milk here because it was a bit cold outside. But if it's warm where you live, then you may not need as much liquid that I'm using. If you have a stand mixer, you can use that also. This will be a super sticky dough. It won't be as dry as regular buns or hops bread. Knead it for about 15 minutes by hand or about 8 to 12 minutes in a stand mixer. As I said, it's going to be really sticky. Now lightly oil the inside of the bowl and the top of the dough. Cover it and let it rest and rise in a warm place. Mine took about 45 minutes to rise. The warmer it is where you live, the quicker it will be. You can also set your oven at the lowest temperature for about 10 minutes, turn it off and place the dough to sit in there. Now the dough has doubled in size. It deflated a little bit as I walked over to the counter dough. Separate into about 12 to 16 pieces depending on the size you want. I weighed the entire dough and divided that number by 15 and that's how you'll know what weight each dough should be. Each one of mine weighed 81 grams. You can also eyeball it and make them the size you like. Place into a well-oiled pan or a pan lined with parchment paper and make sure you use a deep pan with high sides. The bread comes out so much softer. Now I'll let these small dough balls rise again for another 30 to 45 minutes. I know it might seem like forever but trust the process. Now let's make the flour sugar paste for the crosses. Mix about 3 tablespoons of icing sugar with half cup of flour and you want to mix in about 3 to 4 tablespoons of water and mix until it's a thick but slightly runny paste. Fill into a piping bag, a plastic bag or even a plastic squeeze bottle. Pipe the crosses on and bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Traditionally, the crosses were piped on before baking, but you can also add it on after, using icing alone. I'll show you that in a bit. While the buns are in the oven, let's make a glaze to give them a beautiful sheen. To a saucepan, add butter, some honey or some sugar, some vanilla and I'm adding a dash of Angostura bitters. Apricot jam seems to be a popular addition but you can use your favourite jam. These are the only jams I had at home so I'm using a little bit of the hibiscus one. Turn the heat off and set aside. Let's make some more icing for the other buns that I made without raisins and fruits. So I was using my previous recipe that called for two and a half teaspoons of milk to a half cup of icing sugar. Your girl used two and a half tablespoons instead of teaspoons. So the mixture turned out really thin. Now our buns are ready. Wow, the smell is just wonderful. It smells like sweet bread. I'm removing some of them and placing them onto cooling racks. Now I'll brush that sticky, gorgeous glaze onto the buns. It just adds that extra lusciousness.
This is me with my field icing. I actually added some more icing sugar and made it a bit thicker. I also traced over the crosses and the others just to add an extra burst of sweetness. Words just can't describe how soft and delicious these buns are. It has the perfect balance of sweetness and warm spices to entice the taste buds. My crosses turned out a bit flawed, but it reminds me that beauty is found in imperfections. I love eating my hot cross bun by itself or with a hot cup of Trini chocolate tea. How do you enjoy it and what are your favorite Easter traditions? Leave me your comments below. One of my favorite Easter traditions was adding an egg white to a glass of water in the sun on Good Friday morning. I remember seeing my auntie do this with her fresh common fowl eggs. Some say that it works much better with the fresh eggs. I actually posted this earlier to my social media and it was interesting to read what people saw in my glass and they also posted their glasses as well. I hope you have a happy, holy and a blessed Easter. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed learning how to make hot cross buns today. Thank you for always being here and for interacting in the comments and showing love all the time. I appreciate you all. Keep safe and healthy until next time. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe if you haven't and I will see you all in the next one. Bye! Was blind. But now I see